Hey, what's up guys? Tuki here, back again, and it is playoff time yet again for the defending, the reigning and defending NBA champions, the Seattle Sonics. We are the two seed in the West this time out. Unfortunately, the other expansion, or one of the numerous other expansion franchises, the Las Vegas Aces, took that number one seed in the West this year. Although it's not as if not being the top seed affected us last year when we ended up winning the whole shebang. And of course this year, the goal is the same. We take on the seventh seed Denver Nuggets in the first round. Another team that has found championship success over the past few years. Again, it is 2028 at this point in time. And thankfully, despite a rough season in terms of injuries, the team is nearly at 100%. Right now, the only main injury, that being to Murray Hopkins, he'll miss a week or two. So the majority of this series, depending on how long it goes, but we are led by two-time reigning and defending league MVP, Darrell Arnold. Irvin Bohannon is good to go. Sean McKinney, A.J. Marsh, and Lefteris Tarikas, our big five, are very much in place for the bench. Of course, Jesse McDaniels, he's been battling with McKinney for that starting, you know, for that starting roll of forward, it's going to go to McKinney here to start off. Though Julio Cato was able to outduel a couple of other players like Willard Torres, Davidson, and Jackie Nash to make a spot or to earn a spot into this lineup to make his room into this uh, into this postseason lineup. And then of course Byron Wesley is in because of the injury to Murray Hopkins, just to give Marsh and Derekus a little bit of a break. It is essentially the same team that won the league last year, that won the whole damn title, the whole damn thing. You get the point, damn it. I was a little bit distracted, I'll be honest, but that's okay. That's okay. So, let's take a look at our opposition. Let's take a look at ye old Denver Nuggets. It'll take a little bit to scroll over there. Hey, maybe not. There we go. So, this is what we're up against here in the first round. Trey Young, 29 years old at this point, only an 84 overall, which is kind of surprising to me. Dylan Burton and Frank Jackson. So, they have some decent depth at point guard, shooting guard wise. Hamadou, Hamadou, Hamidou Diallo, 79 overall at this point. Ralph Folks, also there. Folk? Yeah, I guess, I guess the Falks. Guy Falks. It's no. Folks is there, though. It's going to be a weird episode at this point. Forward, we have Don Bennett, the most boring name on the team thus far, next to Alain Jebel. you got to be like, where are you from? Friend? Yep, friend. That was, that was my guess. Danny Bolden, also there. Power forward-wise, that is the first spot where we have a massive advantage, of course, in terms of small forwards. It's fairly even, a 79 starter against 78. Obviously, we do have the advantage, you know, point guard and shooting guard-wise, but a massive advantage at point guard as, I mean, it's Perry Daniel, 72 overall. And then at center, I mean, maybe it'll be Harry Giles, and Jokic is still there as well. So... It's, it's going to be interesting. They're also missing Johnny Whitney, but he'll be out for the majority of this series. He'll actually definitely be out for this series. He's out for over a month with a broken right wrist. So no doubt about it, we have the superior lineup heading into this series, which I can't get over Harry Giles' neck. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Maybe it's just because his chin comes to such a point, but my God, man. That is one hell of a neck. I give you credit. Point being, us being the superior team on paper hasn't always led to success in the playoffs. I'd like to, of course, point out LeBron and the Lakers a couple of years ago. But hopefully we have what it takes. That is the argument. So let's get right down to business, shall we? We had five more wins in the regular season. Let's see if we can put that to good use. Game one, Nuggets and Sonics. Our title defense truly truly begins now and we'll see how this goes let's do a little bit of a faster sim through the first as we outscore them 36 to 31 and we're off to a pretty damn good start in the second although they're catching up here ever so, you know ever so uh, surely slowly but surely some might say however from the looks of it it is going to be a double digit lead heading into the second half 71 to 54 at halftime here in game one you love to see it let's keep going Let's keep this up. Let's keep this going. Let's not have there be any drama, any controversy. Just right down to business. 
win the game, no questions asked, make a statement in game one. And that is exactly what we are going to do. Poor Denver. Poor Denver. 113 to 77 at the start of the fourth. We outscored them 42 to 23 in the third quarter. Absolute domination here in game one. No doubter this time out. And that is the perfect way, by the way. Uh, you know, I, actually, I was about to say I like how the logos are so massively different, but you know what? It's fine. It was, I was looking at the I was looking at the shadow underneath our logo, and I'm like, does that make sense? You know what? Doesn't matter. Those are the type of things you start to ask yourself when your team wins by 43 points in the first game of a playoff series. That is, without a doubt, the biggest win I've ever seen us pick up in the playoffs. Irvin Bohannon with the triple double, which is just ridiculous. Darrell Arnold. 30 points in 39 minutes of play, 9 assists. Bohannon, again, the triple-double, 28 points, 11 rebounds, 13 assists. A.J. Marsh with a double-double, 25 points, 16 rebounds. You'll love to see it. McDaniels, 20 points. Not too bad, 20 points in 26 minutes. Dorikas, double-double as well, 18 points, 14 rebounds. McKinney put up 17 points, not too bad. In 32 minutes of play, McDaniels is a little bit more effective. Cato, 4 points in 11 minutes, 4 points for Wesley in 10 minutes. And again, that was just an ass-kicking. Uh, Nuggets only shot 38%, 24 from 3. They were 8 of 33. Massive difference there in terms of where these points would have come from. Second chance points were up there. Just a dominant, dominant effort. Total rebound, I mean defensive rebounds especially, but total rebounds dominated in that regard, dominated in terms of blocks and steals. I mean, they led by two at one point, and our biggest lead, of course, at the end, 43 points. The biggest win we have seen in a postseason game for us in this run, and because of that, we have a one to nothing series lead. A damn good start. Now, interestingly enough, Vegas and Utah haven't played yet. Of course, I'm intrigued to See what happens in that series as Vegas and do take game one. We were neck and neck with them throughout the entire year. Not to say that we're looking past the Nuggets. I think that would be a mistake, obviously. But we'll see what happens here. Game two on a beautiful home court. Maybe maybe fans showed up this time. You never quite know. I still love that glitch. We win a title last year and there's nobody in the stands. Oh, it's a beautiful beautiful thing end of the first quarter we're up 33 to 24 much closer game this time out although in fairness the first half was relatively close for the majority of it and then we absolutely took over which seems to be uh the story this time out as well uh, granted actually no Dem denver's hanging in there it, it was it was close for a second we obviously still have the lead and we, would, and we do take the lead, ultimately, into the second half. But 34-27 to 27 in the second quarter, it was looking like it could have been uh, much, much more worrisome for Denver. But they ended up hanging in there. But as we approach the fourth quarter, we do hit 100 points. 101-81, to 81, a 20-point lead as we go down the stretch here. Fourth quarter, and unless there is a drastic comeback slash collapse... We will take a 2 to nothing series lead with us to Denver. And yeah, this one is uh, this one's over. Not quite a 40-point win, but still a dominant effort regardless. 131 to 112 is your final score in game two, cruising to victory thus far. As AJ Marsh was able to lead this team in points, 26 points, 10 rebounds. Dorikas, 24 points, 15 rebounds. So the two big men getting the job done that time out. 21 points, 15 assists for Darrell Arnold. 17 points for Cato in 10 minutes. Okay. Jesus, he hit 10 free throws in 10 minutes. How the hell? How does that, or... Yeah, what? What happened? That's outrageous. McKinney had 15 points, 7 rebounds in 33 minutes. Bohannon, 14 points, 10 assists in 42 minutes of play. Daniels, 10 and 10. Not too shabby. And then uh, Wesley, 10 points, 2 rebounds. All in all, pretty damn good. Uh, you know, Denver was a little bit better, at least from 3. It explains why it wasn't a complete blowout. But, yeah, pretty dominant efforts, all things considered. They had us beat in second chance points. But, again, the rebounds were huge in our favor. They, didn't, you know, the second chance points for them in terms of offensive rebounds, up there. But, for whatever reason, and again, not the highest overall players on uh, on their side of things, but we're not exactly known as a team that's going to dominate in the paint. 
We've done that so far in this series, and that is a big part of the reason as to why we're up two to nothing. We are going to just let the good times roll here. There is no controversy, no changes needing to be made. We're just going to roll with it. It's game three here in Denver, and the Nuggets getting off to a very strong start, eight unanswered points, and they need that type of effort if they're going to get back into the series. Again, they have found playoff success throughout the past couple of seasons, at least early on. But, I mean, it's, it's a pretty big challenge for them. But lim limiting us to 18 points in the first quarter, that's going to be exactly what they need to look to do. So we'll see what the score is heading into halftime. Denver will, of course, have the lead. It was 56-49, to 49, but an early three-pointer less than 10 seconds into the start of the second half has us right back into this game. A drastically different set of circumstances here, I would say. I mean, well, for lack of a better term, really, it's a much closer game than I think we would have expected it to be. It's a four-point lead for Denver heading into the fourth quarter. Now, they outscored us in the first. We've been battling back ever since. We'll see if we can manage to snag the lead here. We tie the game at least. We do take the lead, trading it back and forth here down the stretch. Can we get any sort of separation? This is going to be... A very close finish at this pace. Under three minutes to go, up by three. Can we hold on? Under two minutes to go, Denver regains the lead. We snag it right back. This is going to go straight down to the wire. 39 seconds left. We're up by six. Now only up by three, and that will do it. 117 to 104. We overcome with 104 to 114. We overcome a slow start to win this game by just three points. Two blowouts to start this series, and we bounce back in game three again after that slow start to end up taking this game in a three to nothing series lead. As a result, Darrell Arnold, a 50 point effort, a career best, according to the at Sonics Twitter account. Hooray. The totally not Twitter account. AJ Marsh, 21 points and 12 rebounds. Dorikas, 21 points, 13 rebounds. Only 11 points for McKinney in this game. Bohannon with 11 assists. Only 6 points for uh, for Irvin Bohannon. That is shocking. Cato, I mean, 12 minutes of play, did a little bit. McDaniels kind of struggled a little bit. It was, it was the Darrell Arnold show, as it's been over the past few seasons. But it was the Darrell Arnold show. And again for Denver... Their inability to sink three-pointers cost them this game. Much like we saw, I think, in game one where the shooting percentage was at 24%. 28% here. They settle for less threes. They would have won this game. That is pretty much the straight-up difference, I would have to say, uh, which I will gladly take. And again, uh, the rebound game is a little bit closer, too. I think that would explain it. But, yeah, if they took less threes, it would have happened. Our biggest lead in this game was six points. And we end up winning the game by just three. We are one win away from making it back to the second round yet again. And we will see if we can close this out in four games. Can we complete the sweep? Vegas, by the way, up three to nothing on Utah. So the number one seed not looking like they're going to fall anytime soon. Can we end this series right here? And right now, game four against the Nuggets. Again, first two games we dominate. Game three, it took a comeback from a slow start, but we got the job done. And now here in game four, can we avoid the sweep? We're going back to Seattle regardless. It's just whether or not it's to prepare for a game one in our second round series or if it's to prepare for game five against the Nuggets. Now, we did outscore them 34-25 to in the first, and we still have the lead at the half. It is 57-45. to 12-point edge as we start the second half. And we'll see whether or not we can hold on here. It's going to take a decent little comeback effort from Denver, but they are certainly capable of it. I mean, again, they dominated the majority of the last game with some of our some of our better talents, <clears throat> Bohannon, struggling to put up points in the last game. But we are here in the fourth. They did outscore us only by three, but they did outscore us in the third. Five minutes to go. We are up by 12 and again, barring a brutal collapse or a crazy comeback from Denver, this series is over. Your defending champions sweep 
the Denver Nuggets. We will move on. A little bit of drama in Game 3, but ultimately we move on. 121-104 to 104 is the final score in Game 4. Darrell Arnold leading the way yet again, 35 points and 10 assists. Bohannon back up to 32 points, 24 points and 11 rebounds from Marsh. 11-10 and 10 for McKinney, 7-7-2 seven, seven, for McDaniels. 16 rebounds for Lefteris Derikas. Not exactly the biggest offensive performance of his career. And yet again, Denver sink themselves by trying to rely on the three-pointer. Uh, 41% compared to 28. And just in general, I mean, you, you look at that, 102 shot attempts, only 36%. I mean, Denver just didn't have it. They just didn't have it. They did, uh, they did beat us pretty well in points in the paint. Second chance points were up there as well. Uh, rebound wise 49 defensive rebounds because of course they were just putting up point or putting up shots left and right they had a two-point lead <laughs> compared to an 18-point lead the Sonics moving on Golden State the sixth seed have swept the three seed Clippers we will be taking on the Warriors in the second round I want to see what the rest of the matchups are looking like from there though so if I hit simulate current round Let's see what we're dealing with. And Murray Hopkins is back. Beautiful. Beautiful. So, Vegas end up beating Utah, our perhaps biggest rivals thus far, in five games. OKC beats Dallas in five as well. So, Vegas and OKC. Of course, we take on Golden State. In the East, the number one seed Celtics beat Indianapolis in six games. You have Brooklyn beating Atlanta in five. So, Celtics and Nets. And then totally not a weird jump cut. In the bottom half of the bracket, you have Orlando sweeping Cleveland and Milwaukee falling in seven to the Wizards. So Wizards and Magic, that is perfect. Nets and Celtics. I am very intrigued to see what Golden State looks like heading into, I mean, the, 20, you know, the 2028 playoffs. What does that team look like? Of course, in real life, that team's falling to the uh, Toronto Raptors, barring a brutal devastating collapse from the Raptors, which I don't think is going to happen. And by the way, yes, I mean, it's, it's not I'm a Celtics fan, more of a casual Celtics fan at this point. Uh, you know, my, my interest in basketball has uh, wavered over the years. But, uh, yeah, rooting for the Raptors to seal the deal, man. No disrespect to, uh, no disrespect to Golden State fans, man, but I'd rather, I'd rather have something new, which, you know, trust me, when people are like, oh, man, I, I, I don't want to see the Red Sox or Patriots win again. Trust me, I know why, because I feel the same way in basketball. And it's like, yeah, let's have someone else other than Golden State win, please. So trust me, I hear you on that. Don't know if we'll bump up Murray Hopkins minutes. Probably won't. I think in terms of the rotation, we are still good to go. Although, let's take a look here. I mean, again, freaking Darrell Arnold playing like a man possessed. The efficiency rating is just outrageous. Uh, Bohannon, again, the efficiency rating, the true shooting, a little bit down from what he did in the regular season, but obviously he's still so tremendously dominant. Sean McKinney, 873 true shooting. We're probably going to bump up his minutes a little bit more, <laughs> just a little bit. A.J. Marsh with a 701 thus far in the playoffs. Again, the efficiency rating is both looking great. And then Lefteris Derrick is still looking Pretty damn good. Uh, performing at a better level than what he was in the regular season, which is just, I mean, you love to see it. Uh, not that McDaniels hasn't been, you know, performing well. McDaniels has been fine, uh, but no doubt we got to drop that off a little bit. Cato has been doing well, and then, of course, Hopkins is in. So let's go ahead and bump up McKinney to the 38 minutes that Marsh and Dorikas have. And I think we'll drop McDaniels to 18. We'll give Cato and Hopkins 12 apiece. And that will be the rotation heading into that second round matchup against Golden State. We will get to that next time out. Will this be the final run for this team? If we win two in a row, might be time to walk away. If we lose, it might be time to walk away and uh, maybe get a new challenge going, whether on NBA or something else. Time will tell. But for now, things are looking pretty good for your defending champions. I will see you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed the video, if you're enjoying the series still, make sure, of course, to drop a like on the video. It helps me out tremendously with the way YouTube is run. Sometimes it's like, oh, hey, the amount of watch time you get. Other times it's, hey, the amount of likes. And it's just, it's YouTube, man. They'll, they'll always, you know, force you to play the game. But thank you 
for watching. Greatly appreciate it. Check out everything in the description if you have not already done so. And I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.